everybody, welcome to Edgewater, Saskatchewan. Uh, episode number 34 now. Thank you very much for coming back. Um, it's white today. Typical Canada. January, absolutely freezing, absolutely covered in snow. Brilliant. Kind of changes my plans ever so slightly. Um, just because I don't know if I'll be able to do it, to be honest with you. So, after posting the last episode, um, which I believe came through yesterday, or it came out on Thursday, depending on when this actually gets released, uh, there was a few comments, a few suggestions. As always, I do kind of keep an eye out on the comments, uh, just to see if there's any good ideas. Um, and something that kind of stood out was, we've purchased the, the new field. Um, which is the one right at the very top. We'll just pause it and we'll jump to it very quickly. This one here, uh, wonderful. It's going to be perfect. I have installed the uh, the open pastures pack or fenceless husbandries, maybe I think it's called, um, and we will be placing that. However, um, really good point. This is at 50, just like I did in our actual kind of yard area. If I don't maximise that while I've got the opportunity and I start placing things over the top, it's never going to get better. Um, in fact, the only way I can kind of get rid of that was to delete every single bit of field, which obviously has a cost to it. So not particularly ideal. What's the solution? Well, let's just treat it. So we'll lime it, we'll fertilise it, and we will cut it just the one time just before we replace the animal husbandry. Um, that will boost the score. We want to get that as close to 100 as possible because once it's at that score, it's at that score. Um, it's never really going to change because we're never going to use that field again for actual farming. Um, however, it does give us a really good opportunity to get some grass bales. You know, we're going to have sheep there. They pretty much survive forever on just grass. You don't need to do anything fancy with sheep. Um, and they're just purely there to make profit off of their wool. I'm not going to lie. We're using and abusing the sheep a little bit. Um, but at least we're not going to get rid of them, um, which is always a positive. Hey, we're just uh, we're growing them for the wool. So once we've treated it, we've done the cut, we've created a few bales, might not be a lot. Uh, we'll probably place a small little shed there and uh, use that to store the bales uh, and the odd little bit of equipment and things we can keep up there as well. So that was my plan. Um, that was my plan over and above the, the kind of obvious, which is selling this, or well, not literally that, but selling the silage, which is inside of it. So 307,790 litres of silage needs to be sold and we might as well sell it all today because it is January. Uh, however, I'm not doing it in that. It's late enough as it is for me doing the recording. I will genuinely fall asleep at the helm of the PC if I had to go backwards and forwards selling it in that. So we are going to jump to the shop and spend some money on a much, much larger forage wagon and there was method in my madness by the way the reason I didn't rush into that spinnery right at the end of the last episode was because I wanted to save around 60,000 to get the forage wagon so that that's it that that's our first job of the day I'm not going to waste time today on the chores and things the things that we usually do we need to make the most of the time so we'll get straight into the shop and as usual, we do need to check the used before we spend too much money. Because there might be, <laughs> would you believe it? I'm, I'm not going to buy it, by the way. I said to myself, I know it's a bit of a joke. It's a bit of a running joke, to be honest with you. Um, but I genuinely don't know how to adjust things that go into the shop. Um, I also genuinely think this game is listening to me. It's kind of, it's freaky. You know, normally when you play it on your own, you don't really talk to a microphone telling the computer what you want to be in the used shop the next day. But but now that I'm kind of talking, 
it always seems to appear. That is a pretty cool forage wagon, by the way, but we can't afford it anyway. That would be nice though. Does look pretty good, doesn't it? However, what I have downloaded, it's kind of near enough the same thing. Um, I've downloaded and installed two different versions actually for me to have a look at, because sometimes the detail on the mod hub isn't quite the same as the detail is when it's installed. So, these two here, so you've got the TARDIS XL, which is just ridiculous, and we will not go for that. Um, that's 200,000 litres that holds. Ridiculous. It's just, that's just absolutely ridiculous. Um, however, this one, a little bit more realistic, I think. Um, so 50,000 litres of silage, 52,500 pounds. The thing that ModHub doesn't tell you, which it does do, which is good, is whether or not you can have a silage additive tank. Um, which we do want to do now. That 5% yield does actually make quite a bit of difference. So we will go for that. And what really appealed to me was the sheer amount of colours you could select. So I'm just going to have a little think for a minute. What kind of brand do we want to imitate? And I've actually changed my mind anyway because it costs quite a bit of money to change the colour. So we ain't going to do it. What is the point? Um, what I was kind of thinking is we'll imitate like a class type looking thing. And because we haven't used it. Uh, and I do quite like the brand class. Quite a, a common brand of tractors which you see around where I'm from. So I do really like them. But it is silly money. It would have cost about 3000 more just to change the colour of the paint. So we ain't going to do that. Um, add the silage tank. 54,500. It's a no brainer. It is an absolute no-brainer. So we're going to go straight in at the deep end. And we will take this down to the shop. We might as well fill it up while we're at it. This will be its last official working journey for us. So it's done as well. This, this forage wagon has really changed the progression, to be honest with you. This is... Probably this little forage wagon has made us hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of profit. In fact, the majority of what you see here is kind of thanks to this forage wagon. So it's done us well. But we move on. You have to grow, and it's not growing with us. Okay, here we are now. So, first load, first sale of the day. First and last for this loading wagon. Watch it do its work for the very last time. Okay, so 9,051 and 682. I remember this time, kind of last year, we weren't making quite that much money. Um, so, pretty promising. To be honest, I've come straight here just because is next to the shop. I haven't actually looked at which place is kind of giving the best price for the silage. I wasn't too concerned about that one. Um, that will kind of get the overall figure just below 300,000, which kind of saves us an extra journey for not a lot. So I wasn't too worried about that, to be honest with you. Um, but we will have a look in a moment. We'll do this properly now. And look at that. Doesn't that look awesome? Right, let's uh, <laughs> let's pull them up and have a look at the size difference. That is definitely an upgrade, isn't it? <laughs> oh, that's crazy. One thing I didn't do, um, which is not unusual for me to just kind of randomly jump into things without checking. Hence the uh, wow. Hence three of all things, I guess. The, uh, the trailer is probably a really good example of that. I didn't actually make sure a tractor could pull it. I'm sure it will be fine. Right, so. Wow, see how much money it needs to repaint it. But it is always worth it and we can afford it. So we'll do that. Repair it. And sell it. Good. 
so we've now got £31,946. That's really good. That is really, really good, you know. What a start to an episode already. Right, let's take this back. And uh, I will, I will just quickly actually look because it's quite important to uh, check that it will run it. 200 horsepower. Wow, we've kind of got that, haven't we? 188. I mean, you couldn't get much closer than that. I'm pretty sure we could do an upgrade to get it just over 200 anyway. So that was, uh, I guess that was luck. Um... I don't know what else to call it. I didn't really check. Fortunate, I guess is the right word. So, just making our way back. It does take a little while to get up to the 33, but it, it still gets there. It still gets to its top speed. It does take a little bit longer. Maybe those extra few horsepowers may be a good investment, you know. We'll, um, we'll see how much money we have left over once we've done our major purchases. Um, but yeah, I think that's a good deal. Um, now, uh, just before recording, actually, I've been watching uh, just just a random bit of YouTube just while I was eating my tea, and um, a video came up, and it's a new game. It's not officially been released yet. I think early access is available from this week. It just looks really good. Uh, it's my kind of game. Uh, it's a simulator game, not anywhere as detailed or as good as this, I'm sure. Um, but it's called Car Sales Simulator or Cars for Sale Simulator. It looks really good. It looks really fun. It's got kind of fake imitations of rear vehicles and you just kind of go around to neighborhoods, buy second-hand cars from people, do them up and kind of make your own car lot. It does look really good. Uh, in actual fact, I think I'm going to download it um, and I might, maybe, I don't know, do a recording and just see if uh, see if it's enjoyable but yeah it does look really fun though so you just got to get a game that you enjoy sometimes haven't you and other than farming simulator I don't really have too many anyway the irony of all of this is this forage wagon actually holds more than the trailer so you could kind of say I planned that on purpose I actually didn't but we'll go with that we will go with that right while that's loading let's have a little look at the cell points see which one of the two is the best currently um, so yeah Larry's bail shipping uh, is the better option um, however it's only 20 more per thousand how does that compare to the environmental score i know previously it's always been worth going to barry's um but hmm, i'm not too sure i mean maybe that will probably compensate for the fact that we cannot fertilize and lime the grass field which has kind of boosted us i guess um we could fertilize we could lime but i don't want to cut it Oh, this tractor is struggling with traction but it is doing it yeah I don't want to cut it I've had many issues in the past when cutting grass in the snow you end up with big verges of snow but the grass disappears so I don't want to do that uh, it would be quite handy to keep the grass just to have bales for, for the sheep so yeah we'll, we'll skip that we'll go with uh, Spending some, some time going down to Larry's and just sell direct with him instead. Okay, worker's on his way. It's the first time I've trusted him in my new tractor. He better not crash it. He better not crash it. This load is going to get us over the 60,000 to buy the spinnery. So I guess an obvious thing to do is jump into the, the little John Deere and just take that down to the spinnery uh, and at least then we've got the bills there ready to go to load straight in and uh, start making us some fabric so we'll do that we'll jump into there first if i can find it there we go 
Yeah, I don't know about that. It'll be quite challenging to see where you've limed and to see where you've fertilised when it's covered in snow. I'm not so sure about that. Now, I do remember I have to be really careful because I didn't get straps. It actually looks like that bale at the back of it. I've not even been playing it, but that's moved. I'm pretty sure that was in line with the front. I might be wrong. One thing I did want to look at while I'm here is whether or not this field... I'm thinking ahead again. I'm spending the money before we got the money. This field here seems a good one, you know. It's 124,000 just over, but if we could utilize this as kind of a, a full time flax field, how perfect would that be? I mean, it's absolutely huge, it's a massive field, but also the straw that that would generate delivered straight down to the spinnery that would just be a kind of I mean you'd have to work for it but it would absolutely be an unlimited money kind of thing and I just wanted to see whether or not it actually had a path which it doesn't but whether it was possible to create a path now my only slight concern is obviously you don't own the land up to the road which is annoying but it won't necessarily stop us from just driving over it. Um, we wouldn't really landscape over land that's not ours. However, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of food for thought. I'm not necessarily going to do it straight away, but we could certainly run ourselves a rough little track in here. Um, maybe try and squeeze it between the trees and just come out onto the main road just behind this sign. Oh dear. Sorry about that. Yeah, just a consideration, but I mean, that would be the perfect field. I'm pretty sure the yield potential was okay. Don't think it's too bad. Um, so, yeah, that's probably, again, all of this is dependent on how much money we actually make, but that's probably a good shout. Okay, right, we're pretty much here now. Um, so we're just going to leave this here uh, because we do need to make that little bit of money first but I'm pretty certain it's going to unload around this side I would imagine it looks like a kind of generic spinnery just with probably some modifications to allow it to take this flax straw but yeah, pretty generic looking building to be honest with you so I'm certain it unloads around here but we'll just leave it there for a moment. We'll shut that off and we'll jump over to the case. Yeah. So worker has pretty much stopped where I told him to, which is fine. <laughs> I always get nervous that if I do select it the other side of the train track, there's going to be a bit of a problem. Because you know it would just happen to be when the train's due. And I imagine it wouldn't stop. It's probably not smart enough for that. Okay, right, well, how much are we going to make? 26, 27 grand maybe? I really am guessing. £31,419. So, just over £31,000. I do wonder actually if it, if it is a bit better to go to the other place with the environmental score. Because we sold, say, 16000 uh, and we got ten and a half grand. Now, this kind of holds three and a half times that amount. So in theory, that's like 35, 36 grand. N next time, we'll um, we'll send it back. We'll put it to there. And. Uh, We'll go to the other place and we'll just test it. Now, let's jump back into this place. We will buy this. We're going to be straight back down to hardly any money. 60,000. Just like that. Now, we'll go into the production menu and we will just check. 
I'm certain. I mean, I know it's going to take flax straw. That's the whole feature of the map. But there we go. So every five straw makes three fabric. Every wow. That's pretty good ratio, isn't it? That is really good, actually. So five straw makes three fabric. Wow. What does fabric sell for? No selling point available. Good. Obviously, they did that on purpose. So we'll, we'll have to create a selling point. I'm pretty sure they fabric. Does fetch quite a bit of money. I'm sure it does. Now, maybe in the meantime, I don't know what you think, but maybe uh, the town of Edgewater has a uh, grand opening of a new supermarket, which just happens to buy fabric coming up, maybe, or do I actually buy a sale point myself? I'm not too fast either way, but I don't know. It's a bit crazy, isn't it? You've got this kind of big feature on this map yet. They don't create a sell point for it. Doesn't really make sense. Now, maybe I was wrong, by the way. Maybe I was wrong. Don't do this too often, but let's pop the zone markers on. No, I'm not wrong. Why is it not taking it? So, it does take it. Just needs a little bit of persuasion. Kind of... <laughs> We need it to fall off the trailer. I've managed to get rid of quite a bit of it already. Unless it's full. Oh, it is full. So, wow. 45,000 litres of straw. Already. And it only took five bales. We don't need a field that produces more flax straw at this rate. That is absolutely insane. That is insane. Right, well, in that case, we'll just leave it there. Just let it kind of top itself up as it's going, I guess. We're not going to need the trailer. We're not going to need the tractor for a little while. So, we'll leave it to it. Right, let's carry on going with this. So this time we're going to go to the livestock auction, get a little bit of an environmental score bonus to go with it, and just compare it. We need it to do anything more than thirty-one and a half thousand dollars. Oh dear! This thing unloads incredibly quickly. Right, twenty-eight thousand one hundred twenty-two plus two thousand and nineteen. No. You know, a couple hundred quid in it, but the other place is a little bit more money. Still, very, very close though. Which is easier? Which is easier to get to? I think uh, our, f our friend Barry is much easier to get to because the worker doesn't get confused and drive all the way around the map. So we'll stick with Barry. Wow. I don't know. Pretty dodgy job to be honest, but it worked. I have no idea if it's actually going to accept all those bales. Probably not. A few of them are probably outside of the trigger, but that's fine for a minute. That is okay. Now, we do need to... The reason why I suddenly remember we do need this trailer, we do need this trailer, is because we have got a few other things we need to sell. We've got the lettuce. Not going to be a huge amount of lettuce now. Um, but we do have to sell the lettuce uh, and also I think the maple syrup um, which normally would be loaded into the back of the truck but I would imagine it's going to generate quite a few pallets so we might as well use this little trailer uh, it is far easier to manoeuvre than our low loader that is for sure now I know it's in the top corner looks like the case is blocked so we'll jump over to him. Yep, he is definitely blocked. They don't really have a brain, do they? That wasn't a sexist remark, by the way. I did not realise it was a lady driver when I said that. 
apologies in advance there. Um, but no, the AI, they just don't have a brain, do they? They are just a little bit thick. So let's move this out of the way. Oh, is it going to start driving around? Why does it do that every time? Do you know what? This will be interesting to see actually how it actually manages to maneuver itself down here. Oh dear. <laughs> Where's it going? It's going to get stuck in it. Okay. Well, I mean, it got to exactly where I told it to go, just not the way I thought it would get there. Okay, that's that done. In relation to the trailer, by the way, I was thinking, if I was to go up to all those soybeans as we, uh, as and when we do eventually sell them, would I be able to pick up the soybeans? into that trailer. I mean I guess with uh, a kind of uh, front loader attachment we could probably lift the pallets up, pour them into the trailer. Uh, that would be so much easier because then we can um, sell them again at the train station which which would be good because that money difference is definitely worthwhile. Um, that I suppose though if that does work we're going to need to get that tractor with a bigger much higher front loader. Little forklift there. Would that be handy to have? £25,000? I don't know. Maybe at the um, the spinnery might be a good idea because obviously we're going to have pallets of fabric eventually. Maybe we should think about that. I don't like that kind of forklift though, if I'm honest. I don't like the way it drives. Yeah, in fact, that's probably my least favourite forklift. So maybe not. Maybe not. Um, I tell you what, though, talking about the spinnery, I didn't even activate it. I bet there's people watching it going, you idiot. Oh, apparently I did activate it. I don't remember doing it, but it has activated itself at the very least. Um, while we're here, let's have a look. So there's 6,600 litres of maple syrup. And, will it tell us how much lettuce there is? 3,300 of lettuce. There's also a 1,000 of each pretty much spawned. So that's quite a bit there. And, if I remember, all of it should be sold in January. Might be wrong. Well, that's February. So that's fine. And that's one less job to do today. But the lettuce, I'm certain, that's January. Oh, that's February as well. Although currently, it's actually higher than it was last year. Now, just because February is showing as its highest price, by the time you skip forward into February, the price may have gone down. It doesn't always necessarily mean February will be the best price. It's just basing it on the, the previous year's high and low points. So the fact that it, Maximum last year was 3243, and now it's 3336 at Brenda, who likes to take anything you can give her. Seems like a good deal. Maybe we should, uh, we should get that lettuce loaded up. Also, looking at this, decent amount of honey now. Starting to build up there. So, 4, 8, 12. So, 2.4, say 3,000 litres there, roughly. What's 3,000 litres of, of honey look like? And again, when is it best to sell that? February again. And that does take a substantial jump in February. So yeah, at the minute, what's the best we got? 3,178, 3,306. So it looks like February is going to also be a busy month. Lettuce, maple syrup and honey. All to sell. Good. Now, let's just quickly check. I'm pretty sure I've looked before, but soybeans are kind of mid-year. 
Um, June is when it's at its peak, um, which is about 2,600 roughly. Um, so in theory, the, the train to Saskatoon is probably going to be up over 3,000 a litre again. Uh, 3,000 per thousand litres again, I should say. Good. We've got loads more investments here. Loads more money to make. I do really like the way that this puts that roof on in the winter months. I also like the way that it kind of puts the snow bulging on top on the roof as well. This is a really cool mod. I think I've pretty much said that every year when we get to January. I'm sure I have. But the detail in it is great. That is a cool mod. And also, it's generated us. There's 14,000 litres of soybean inside of that greenhouse. On top of the 8,000, although for some reason there's only 7 there. On top of the 7,000 litres that is actually put on the outside of it. That is insane. If that's worth 3,000 a litre, that's already like £60,000 there. Wow. That is pretty good. Now, just while we're waiting for our workers to bring back some of the equipment, let's just double check on these guys. So, they do need a little bit of food. And we probably need to do that in the next episode. Um, the animals, I ain't going to sell them anymore. I'm not doing it. It's a bit tedious to start an episode doing that. Um, although they are that compacted into one little thing. They are literally morphing into each other. Not very good. Three and one pig. Um, but yeah, we're, we're not going to do it. We're going to change this. Um, this whole arrangement is going to change. In fact, once I decide what I'm going to do about the, the track, which will probably be here... This whole area here can be pigs. All of it. The only thing I won't move is the open air greenhouse. But if I have to, I'll get rid of the shed. And we'll make this a nice big pigsty. Yeah, I think that will look good. And it will also resolve our brooding issues. Now, cases arrived at... Larry's or just before Larry's so we'll uh, finish the journey we'll sell this okay lovely just pulling up now and we'll um, just again we'll just keep an eye out on how much money we're gonna make so yeah 31,640 that that makes probably 200 Sorry, 400, but 400 quid, 450 dollars more to do it that way. And it is a little bit easier to get to. So we'll, we'll keep going there. We'll keep stocking up Larry. Okay, lovely. Right, so case is on its way back. I am, by the way, uh, really needing some help now. Um, and it is quite difficult to pin me down to a time. I kind of, um, a bit like an, I improvise in an episode. I have to improvise with uh, the kids, to be honest with you. Um, once they're in bed, once they've gone to sleep, I can kind of jump on. It's difficult to pre-plan when I'm actually going to play. But I do need help now. Um, especially if I buy that large field that I mentioned right at the very beginning. Because flax requires everything to be done manually literally everything the, the swathing has to be done manually on a crop the uh, pickup has to be done manually that's going to be a big job so I'm going to have to get some people helping me I think and I have got lots of names so thank you very much um, Altair also owes me a favour now um, after I've been on and, and landscaped his which is, should be something that you'll see very soon actually um, I don't know that episode I don't know whether to release it it's kind of a bit of a I don't know like a landscape hints and tips sort of episode because I do actually spend the majority of the episode talking about landscaping and the tools and I don't know I guess kind of 
just discussing how I kind of do the landscaping. So I might just release it as a little bit of a side thing, as a, a hints and tips kind of landscaping episode. Um, you never know, might get me a few more views as well. Okay, so case is on its way with another load. Still nearly 100,000 litres in that silo to sell. Um, so it's looking like we're probably going to end the episode on about 150,000, which is pretty good. Considering we spent 60 on the spinnery and 50 right at the beginning on the forage wagon. Pretty, really good in fact, really really good. Now just uh, in the meantime, while we've got someone doing all the driving for us, starting to preload our jobs for tomorrow. So I'm having, <laughs> I've got to be so careful because I don't have straps. It must have been something I selected. Um, I don't know. I didn't look at it in enough detail. Maybe I should go back to the shop and customise. I probably will once we've sold the lettuce. Um, but for a minute we're just going to have to be real careful. So I am going to continue to load up the maple syrup. I'll get that onto the back. This is going to take a while. And uh, I also noticed that worker H is blocked by an object. Great. Right, there goes another load. The money's going up nice and fast. Alright, two more trips. That's all we have to do. Two more trips. So you're going to notice a bit of a change to the truck soon. Um, probably the next episode. Um, as part of the deal when I went to Altairs, uh, earned a little bit of side cash through landscaping for him, which I have created an episode for, which I've mentioned already. Um, part of the deal was actually he would respray the truck. Now, you know, kind of a little bit of role play. Obviously, he's not even on this map. Um, however, um, I will make the adjustments. I'll activate the easy dev mods just for that. The next episode. Um, reconfigure this truck to how he had it set up for me um, and then uh, I'll turn the easy dev mods back off but yes you will see this is the last time you will see the truck in that state for definite it's also the last time you're gonna see it in that color I've changed it gone a bit different and I think it's gonna look pretty awesome Wow, we still <laughs> we still got ninety one thousand six hundred and ninety liters. So much. Now, just while that's loading, it's quite slow. Just credit to whoever made the mod. I really do like this mod, you know. Just the detail. Some mods just don't get dirty. They don't get dirty in the right areas. This one is pretty good. I do like it. The level of detail is brilliant. Now the fact that the exhaust is kind of see-through, that the front grille, just like the kind of standard in-game versions are all see-through. Is this just a really good mod? I think I am going to use it more often. Anyway, that is done finally. We'll uh, send this on its way. Okay, here we are again at Larry's. I have no idea how many trips we've made. I really don't know. Quite a few. A definite. Now, this will put us up over 100,000. Which is good. First time this episode we've been over that much. First time this year, maybe, in fact. That really unloads so fast. So another 31,652, so we're nearly at 130,000 now. Just one final load to do, I think it's just over 40,000 litres, 41,000 or something like that. Um, not a full full load, probably top us up to 150,000, which is incredible.
that that's a really good kind of outcome for this episode considering what we've spent um, and to be honest what I might do I, I sell the last load at the other spot at the auction the, the animal auction because I can just nip straight over to the shop just while we're there and while I'm remembering um, I want to fill up the silage additive um, on this forage wagon because I will forget uh, and I won't remember until I'm halfway through actually harvesting the grass so I do want to do that I'm also going to pay that little bit extra on the tractor uh, and get that customised to the slightly bigger engine uh, it, it kind of struggles a little bit it struggles it does get to full speed but it just struggles to get there um, and I can only imagine that when the actual uh, the pickup is lowered the, the motor is running to actually collect the grass I think it's probably going to struggle even more so that extra little bit of horsepower might make all the difference that extra 20 horsepower or whatever it is I think that that will make a difference so we will do that while we have the money okay here we are 41,691 litres which is the last of it and we are going to sell it at this point, as I mentioned, because I want to pop straight to the shop, get some silage additive, and just customise this tractor ever so slightly. Just go for the slightly bigger engine. Now, hopefully this time, I've done it wide enough. No, I haven't. I thought I had, but obviously not. The turn and circle with this bit of equipment is awful should make it this time though okay brilliant so we won't get out because it unloads so quickly 23,614 plus 1,779 pretty good this is just over 153,000 uh, which is amazing so pretty much it now this has been a long old session for me by the way this is one of those ones where I don't know exactly how long it's been um, for the episode there's a little bit of editing here and there there's all of these various return trips which have just taken ages um, so I really don't know how long the episode is going to be I'm going to say probably slightly longer than normal actually um, but we will find out right now Let's uh, customise this. Well, it looks quite nice when it's clean, doesn't it? Maybe we should give it a wash next episode. Um, we're going to go for the bigger engine. So yeah, it was 203. <laughs> Gives us three horsepowers to play with. Not very good. And we'll leave the rest of it the same. So £5,000. But it's £5,000 that we need. Um, this tractor is quite quickly reduced. Its uh, conditioning has reduced really, really quickly, you know. It's, uh, it's halfway now. Now, check the shop as usual. There is nothing. I did look at the Zeta there. I looked at that a couple of times, in fact, because it does have the option for the front loader. But... I don't know. Is that a lot? 55,000 for a tractor that has 136 horsepower. Probably is a lot. So yeah, I don't know. We, we'll give that one a miss for a minute. And now, what is the silage additive? What does it come under? Okay, there it is. So, it's a lot of money. £2,990 for 60 litres. But, I mean, I assume it's worth it. I haven't made the calculations just yet, but I guess it is worth it. It's got to be worth it. I mean, 5% yield bonus on that field is probably about 15 grand. Wow, no. It's only actually taken 10 litres. Yes, yeah, definitely worth it then. If that 10 litres does that full grass field, then for certain that is definitely 
worth the investment. Now, to be honest, I think that's probably it. Um, that needs a wash. Look at the state of it. So, pretty good episode, I think. Anyway, uh, we're ending it on $145,293. But, we've upgraded the case. We've bought this magnificent piece of machinery. And it's absolutely huge. We've also bought the spinnery, which was $60,000. Um, yeah, we have done really good. We've done really, really good. Here's for hoping that snow mounts sooner rather than later. Optimistic thinking, given the last two or three years that we've done on this mount so far, it will probably be there until February, March, but hopefully, you never know, it hasn't actually snowed. Um, and also, the snow isn't scheduled, so we might be lucky, it might melt. That would be great. Now, um, as usual, thank you so much for watching. If you're still watching, I do appreciate it. Um, it probably is a slightly longer than normal episode. Uh, next time I release a video, it'll probably be the roleplay story mode. Um, I haven't finished doing that recording yet, but I do have a day off work tomorrow. So hopefully I can get that one loaded up. And then probably after that on Sunday actually I'm going to release that episode the the kind of I think I will call it landscaping tips and tricks or something like that um, to be honest because that's kind of what I'm doing throughout the whole episode um, and also I'm being a bit crafty really that's more than likely what people potentially new to FS22 would search for some tips and tricks on landscaping because it is a bit of a, a vast tool to use so you know it might get me some extra views it might get me some more followers which means more people get to watch what I'm spending quite a lot of time doing so that's always good so yeah if you are still here I really really do appreciate it uh, as usual Leave me loads of comments, ask me loads of questions, give me loads of suggestions because you can probably tell in every episode they do make a massive difference. I, I genuinely take all suggestions on board and it changes what I'm going to do in the next episode. It really does influence it. Um, so I do appreciate it. Keep them coming. And until the next time we speak properly, cheers and gone.